back during my earlier days of writing, um, the biggest challenge that I had, and it was not something that I recognized at the time, I only recognized later, was the issue of believability. <clears throat> and when I say believability, I'm referring to both believability in terms of factual points and also in terms of character, i.e., would the character actually do this? Do I buy into that the character's stated actions or um, beliefs are true for that character? <clears throat> I think very early in the process, we as writers, we tend to use poetic language, um, both in terms of facts, uh, which are things like I, I often give the example of someone that writes, you know, um, so-and-so had the same nightmare for a decade, right? I, I use that a lot because you're being poetic. The, the, the character in, in that example there doesn't wouldn't actually have a nightmare every night for a decade. No human being would. Um, <clears throat> no matter how traumatic an incident you might write, it simply won't, won't happen. Um, It's poetic. It's you're what you're saying is it was it was a frequent nightmare that they may have had on and off for a decade. It's maybe what you're trying to say, or maybe you aren't even thinking in terms of rationality when you give that example. Maybe you're just trying to think of a cool line to pull someone in, All right? Um, another good um, example would be that Stephen King story and. God, I'm the worst person because I'm trying to remember what the name was. Um, I think it was it was the one about the the woman who was beaten um, every day for like a decade. I, I'm almost positive. Um, and she finally takes off. Yeah, I think it was. I want to say Rose Matter, maybe. Maybe it's what it was. But there's a line where in the beginning of the the book, um, there's a quick scene where like the husband is just brutally beating the wife. Like um, just brutally beats her. And the scene ends with her going to bed just lying down after taking this beating. And the, the Stephen King line at the end is, um, you know, this would repeat for another. She would go to sleep like this every night for 10 years or something to that effect um, obviously I don't buy that I don't think that's factually true um, both in terms of realism I, I don't think that every day for a decade you'd get beaten I think often someone might get beaten frequently for a decade but I think at least one day out of those 10 years you would not be beaten or abused I imagine um, it's it seems like too high of a number to buy into and so kind of like the example I gave before this this line was more just used just to give an example of how awful their life was um, during this period of time and I suppose it also serves as kind of a cool ending to a chapter. It's a, it's, it's, it's a catchy line, right? It's a catchy way to end it. But that language is poetic. I, I, I don't, as a reader, I don't buy that this happened every time for a decade um, as a point of fact. And yeah, I just don't buy into it. So though that's kind of where the point of fact comes in. Now, believability on the other side of that is for character. Um, when it comes to character, one always needs to ask themselves, do you believe that this is true? Would your character actually do this? And it wasn't something I ever thought about until I was going for my MFA and um, there was a lecture and um, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say who it was. It was Andre Dubois um, had read a story by someone in, in the group and 
we, we basically, basically we each went up there and we each read like, like the opening like it was, it was like an open like you get to like do your first 500 words of like your story to read and he would just give a critique of it real quick um for like this little panel and there was something that was said and i can't remember i wish i remembered what it was but the point is he stopped like, like it was like a couple of sentences in and he stopped and he said i don't buy that it, it was a something that the character had said and it was another exaggeration. It was, it was, you know, every day I do something, every day something happens. And Andy Roy just said, stop, I don't believe you. I, I don't buy this is actually true. This is not, there's no way, I, I, I don't believe that this could be true for the character. <clears throat> and it was the first time I ever, ever heard someone say that. I'd never before ever heard someone ever say, I don't buy this for the character. I never knew that was a thing. Um, I always just assume we sort of take the author at their word, basically, unless it's like a really overdrawn exaggeration. Um, but it opened my eyes to the fact that when you write, you really cannot use poetic language. You cannot use absolutes. Um, you can't use always something always happened or such and such a thing always occurred or just writing things that sound cool or sound interesting for lines but are not true to your character that is like super 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 important um and it's just one of those things where in the beginning of my early writing i never thought about it i thought for me if i just write really good scenes it doesn't matter if i can just write really strong sentences and really interesting scenes really good plots really can you know, complex characters, eh, what's exactly said doesn't matter. No matter how, you know, the actual words you put down don't actually matter at all, um, really. You know what I mean? If you've got a good story, you got a good premise, you got interesting characters, who cares if you throw in a poetic word? Who cares if someone wants to be, you know, what I thought was like pedantic and just go through um, each thing you write, you know, like line by line, sentence by sentence, and thinking to themselves, I don't, I don't follow this. Um, it's only after that, after a time that, that, um, especially when I was going through that, that I began to understand that, no, 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 everything you write, every sentence you put down has power and you need to use that power to create complex characters and, and interesting characters that are believable because your reader is going to take every sentence literally. You may not. And if you're not taking every sentence seriously, but your reader is, that's a big discrepancy there. You, you, there's a misunderstanding on your part. Um, it was big, 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 huge eye-opening thing for me. And so this video, I guess, is to give, again, kind of um, reinforcing the idea that if you're not writing things that are true, that, that are um, actually factual, both in terms of fact and also for your character, you're going to weaken yourself later on. Um, and the way to solve this problem is to write concrete language, not to write, not to rely upon poetic language. There's a place for it in writing. There's a place for poet, you know, for poetic language. That's not literally true. Um, but oftentimes you need to stick with the concrete that, that is literal. Um, you need to understand your character really well and write things that are true to your character. And lastly, you need to focus on research for factual points. Uh, I cannot tell you how many times when I first started, um, even when I was going for my, my MFA, that I was writing things that just point of fact were just not true, that I was writing down, um, just putting on the page. And my professor would call them out. Um, uh, the woman that I had, who I worked with for the first six months, is a really, really, really good screen... Well, yeah, I'd, I'd say... Um, Definitely, definitely involved in the screenwriting out in Los Angeles. She does a lot of work for Netflix, and she was the an absolute, absolute um, godsend in one way and an absolute complete bitch in the other. <laughs> and I say that as us being on awesome terms, and and, and I say that in the most glowing way because that's what I needed. Um, I needed someone that could be like really, really good at like hammering points home, and and she would often. Um, be like, no, this makes no sense. No, that's this is factually untrue. You wrote something that's clearly not true, um, and it, it'd be it'd be a point of fact about how. Um, I remember I opened a scene one time with a line of something like, you know, contrary to popular belief, um, or no, it, it, it was it was it's estimated that the first memory we, we form is often formed by scent. You walk into a place, you you remember the scent more than any other sensory detail, and she would point out and say, no, that's not true. That, 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 that's, that's actually a debunked thing 
And then I remember there was another time when I wrote, um, it was something like, you know, experts say that, you know, we use like 10% of our brain or something like that. And it was to kind of build into a scene for a character. And she, and she immediately crossed up and goes, no, that's a debunked idea. Stop writing this shit. Actually, and she wrote, actually research, basically. Um, and it was it was big. It was hugely eye-opening to get that, to, to be told that by someone, you know, to be told, hey, no, 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 you can't just wing it. You cannot just wing these points of fact here. You have to actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> you can't just jump in there and, and do these small little these small little asides hoping that someone just goes, oh, okay, yeah, that, yeah, I've heard that before. I'm going to keep reading now, right? Like, what you write, no one's going to gloss over. <laughs> um, it was huge. So, yeah. Um, this video, I, I guess, turned to a bit of an anecdote, but uh, I was just feeling up for it today, I guess. Um, I hope this helps. I hope this point helps. And again, uh, the problem with writing often is that is that it's hard to distill like single ideas. A lot of it is very conceptual advice. A lot, of, especially a lot of the best advice, it's conceptual. Um, that's often why when you see like YouTube channels that that give advice, it's often beginner level, like. Um, you know, prescriptive advice of like write every day, um, you know, don't, you know, avoid dialogue tags besides said or something like that, right? Like it's it's general stuff you can give people because the, the deeper you go with this, the more you have to rely upon concepts and it's very, very hard to explain and teach. Um, so I do hope this idea helps a little bit though for those um, on the idea and the importance of using concrete language and believability for your characters and for your stories um yeah and so if you did enjoy it please give it a like uh, i'll be back tomorrow um, with another video